Hi, welcome to Sisters International. Please, please, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And thank you, thank you for all the discussions and all the emails and texts and interactions from you guys. Without you, we wouldn't have a channel. Um, now, this is a very, very, very serious video that I'm going to share with you. It's been on my heart and I'm like, should I do it? Should I not? Should I do it? Should I not? And I've decided, do you know what? Especially after a conversation I had this morning, again, I'm going to do it. We are here to help you guys do your due diligence, to help you guys stay safe in the Gambia, to help you guys know your rights and know your laws and know your protection while you're moving and living in the Gambia. We run a, a, a group for sisters. We have hundreds of sisters uh, that partake and that are in our groups and we help and support those sisters. We don't want anybody um, to lose because we know that our sisters and brothers, you know, work hard for their money. They work very hard for their money. And they want to create a legacy by owning a piece of Africa. So that they create a legacy for their children and their grandchildren and their other children and, and, and relatives to come. Now, our issue is <laughs> there are people and those people look like you and me. And some of those people are born in the same countries as you and me. Born in Jamaica, born in America, born in um, um, Europe, born in the UK. And people are conning people left, right and centre when it comes to land deals in the Gambia. Now this is our land buying number two to you guys. First of all, we called out Parang. If you haven't seen that video, have a look at that video. Now on this video, we are going to, we're not in the business of calling out companies, but what we are in the business of is helping people do their due diligence, forewarning people so that they can be forearmed, giving information and helping to protect people. Now, we had a client come to us to do some due diligence on some land that they have bought. We have done their due diligence and we have gone to the land's offices. We've gone to Brakama Area Council and we have found the evidence from the officials in the Gambia that the land, this person, and we've actually found out others now as well, the lands that they have bought is in TDA. You might have heard of the word TDA thrashed about. Oh, don't worry about TDA. TDA stands for Tourism Development Area. That is reserved land for the government in the Gambia to use for tourism. And the people that are in charge of that TDA land is the GTB. Or you might have heard people say the GT board. And that stands for the Gambian Tourism Board. So you have the Gambian Tourism Board and they own TDA. Yeah? Tourism Development Area. They own that area. Now, what's been happening is people have been selling other people TDA land. Nobody is at liberty to sell TDA land except for the GT board. And they don't sell it, they lease it. But what we found is diasporans, some diasporans have been selling TDA land to other diasporans because they know that they know nothing about Gambian Tourism Board or TDA. And it needs to stop. So our client came to us to say, can you do the due diligence on this piece of land I've bought? We found it's in TDA. So they have brought this land to use as residential to build their home and they cannot do that. Brakame Area Council, physical planning, cannot release documentation on that land without permission 
of the Gambian Tourism Board. So this client now has to go to the Gambian Tourism Board and do a whole registration process and put in an application that may or may not be approved in order to develop a tourism business. Not residential where you can build your home and live. You have to have a tourism business in the Gambia in order to lease and have TDA land. Now, our client said, I want my money back because I have been, you know, conned into buying something that I didn't know what it was. I was told it was residential and I can build my home. I was told, start putting up your fence. Don't have to wait for the documentation. Build your fence and build your borehole and start building your wall and your house. But I can't do anything, he said. So we encouraged him to go back to the seller and speak to them. It was a man and his sister. Speak to them and ask them for your refund, which is what he did. Very sadly, he did that. And this is the response that he got. This is the response. There's something wrong with you. There's something seriously wrong with you. I didn't understand. I don't understand how you can be even, your head can even be like that. I thought you was intelligent. You're not the first person that's bought land in Carlton. When you was going to, when, when, um, what's her, what's her name again from Birmingham? The she buy the land and you was going to buy a piece of that land. Okay, I bought loads of land in Carlton, and there's loads of other couples, hundred at least a hundred people, that's bought different pieces of land themselves. So therefore, all of us then would be wrong. You but oh, you're so special, Gary. You but oh, you're so special, Gary, that you are different to all the thousands of people. Come on, man, please wake up. What's wrong with you? We all would then would have made the same, would have made a mistake. No, come on. Thousands and thousands of people, and you're the hard one out. Yeah, he's the odd one out. He's the odd one out because he's done his due diligence. He's the odd one out because he did not sit back and say, oh, I'm going to listen and just build my house and get it knocked down by TDA. He decided to move on further and get all of his paperwork. He decided to contact somebody to get the paperwork. When he found out it is in TDA, he didn't bury his head in the sand. He looked at all of his options. What do I do if it's TDA? Okay, I don't want to go through that. I'm going to go back to the seller. This is the response he got from the seller, which is absolutely disgraceful. And I'm sure the seller or the sellers was not talking to him like that when they took his thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. But, you know, I have to put the onus back on you. We talk all the time. Do your due diligence. Sometimes we say these things and people still go and buy lands and come back to us and say, oh, this is what's happened. And we say, but you saw the video. You got advice from this person and that person. What happened? Yes, I know, and I was told that these people can't, and I was told not to buy land, but I thought I'd do it anyway. And because of that, we have to put the owners back on you guys. Women, when you go to buy a lovely dress and a pair of shoes. Men, when you go to buy a nice car or a pair of shoes. Whatever you're buying. For us as sisters, We'll try on our dress in the shop. 
we'll look in the mirror, we'll look this way, we'll look that way. We might even take a selfie and we'll video call sometimes our friends or our kids and say, what do you think of this dress for the party tonight or for the christening or the wedding? What do you think? If we can do that with clothes and shoes, why would we just take our hard-earned money and buy a piece of land because somebody said it's okay to without checking it out first? There are too many people from out of Gambia, Gambians as well as diaspora, that are buying land blindly. The land sellers know this and you are targeted we know you are targeted a few days ago we did an experiment with one of the land companies that are not registered and that are selling lands that are government lands and one of our Gambian staff members rang them and ask them, can we have an appointment to come and see your land? And because they heard they were Gambian, they said, no, you cannot have an appointment to see our land. And they made a million excuses and they were asking them questions about the land and they refused to answer them. Five minutes later, with my British accent, I rang. Can I have an appointment to come and view your lands? Of course you can. When do you want to come? Come tomorrow. Come tomorrow. So straight away, we knew. We knew before, but we were experimenting. And we knew that these companies are targeting the diaspora because they know the diaspora know very little about land buying in the Gambia. And they know that most of the diaspora are not in the Gambia on a permanent basis. So once you buy the land, the last thing you're going to want to do is go to court and fight these people for your land or for your money back. So you're being targeted. You are being targeted. You are being sold government land. You are being sold land on the roadside and you are being sold land that is in the tourism development area. And one of the phrases that we've heard recently, which some of the land companies are doing, is basically that you cannot see the land until you buy it. And the phrase that they're using is cash and carry. No lie. People abroad are listening to this craziness and sending their cash. And after they send their cash, then they say, we can send you a video of the land that you have bought. Are you crazy? People are doing this. They are doing this cash and carry. Spend your money and then we'll take you to see your land or take your representative to see your land. By that time, it's too late. Wake up, please. We are here as Sisters International to support our sisters. And in terms of the YouTube, we support sisters and brothers. When brothers come to us with problems and issues and want us to do due diligence, we don't send them away. We say, okay, we're here to support our brothers as well. But on our WhatsApp groups, we support our sisters. We know sisters are coming. We know our sisters are vulnerable. We know our sisters are coming with their hard-earned money. And we know our sisters want to own a piece of Africa, not just for themselves, but leave a legacy for their children, their grandchildren, their grandchildren's children. Not only in the Caribbean, but they want to leave a legacy and choices for their children and generations to come in Africa and they are being scammed by each other by diasporan to diasporan and by Gambia to diasporan they're being scammed 
So what I'm saying is you've got to take responsibility. The onus is on you to do your due diligence, do your checks and balances. When you go to the lands office or when you go to a government department, if you went to a government department in the UK and there were people outside, sitting outside, and you say, oh, I've come to see this person, and they said, oh, follow me, I'll deal with you. Would you do that in the UK? No, you would go into the office and ask officially for the official people who work there. There are people targeting you when you're wandering around and you don't know where you're going and you're asking them, oh, I need to talk to somebody about this. Oh, come with me. No. Stop it. Please, please, please go to the officials or come and ask for an escort to go with you to see the officials. Go into the office and speak to the people in the official office and they will tell you the truth. They are not scamming you. They are there to uphold the law and they are there to give you sound advice in terms of buying lands in the Gambia. Rakama Area Council and Physical Planning are there to support you and to give you the correct information. The Lands Office in Banjul and the Director is there to support you and give you the correct information. The Tourism Development Board in Senegambia area, between Senegambia and Kotu, I think it is, they are there to support you and give you the correct information. They're not going to hide information from you. But the people that seem to be giving you the incorrect information are the people that are making money from you, targeting you because they know that you are ignorant in your knowledge of the Gambia. You are ignorant in your knowledge of the laws of the Gambia. So the onus has to be on you to do your due diligence. Now, if you have bought land under false pretenses, you can go back to the land seller. If you have bought land and you've not been given any paperwork, go back to the seller. Demand your money back and dem or demand your ownership paperwork. I said in the last video, if you're buying land, make sure the person who is selling you land owns that land, whether it's a company or an individual. Check the paperwork, the name on the land paperwork, ownership paperwork, is the same as the person who's selling you the land. The person who's selling you the land, have their ID and have the land ownership paperwork and make sure it is the same. There are too many scams going on. And guys, you need to do your due diligence and you really need to understand yourself or the person that you're sending need to have a full understanding of what's going on and the tricks and the scams and the, you know, the, the things that are happening to get your money, your hard-earned money. And then when you're scammed, you blame Gambia. When you're scammed, you blame Africa. When you're scammed, you say the West is better. No, you've got to take responsibility for your own actions. You've seen uh, loads of YouTube videos. Don't buy land from this person. This person scammed that person. This is what's going on. And you ignore it. And you still go and buy land. And then when you buy land and you, you can't get your paperwork or you can't build, you start to complain. And sometimes you complain to the very people who warned you in the first place. You really need to do your due diligence. I'm sorry I keep saying this, but to be forewarned, is to be forearmed. It's not easy doing these videos. And, you know, we get backlash and we get people backlashing us. But you know what? At Sisters International, we want you to know what you're doing. We want you to have your eyes open as you walk through the processes. And if you want us to hold your hand while you go through that process, that's what we're there for. But Diaspora, stop trying to get money and to con money through land buying off of other diasporans. If you know you've made a mistake and you've bought TDA land, don't pass it on to another diasporan for double the price you paid for it. 
Don't pass it on to another diaspora without telling them the land is TDA. It's not residential. Stop telling them, ah, in this area, TDA is only 200 metres from the ocean. TDA is TDA, 800 metres. The other thing is, <clears throat> sometimes you get TDA and it's on this side of the road where the ocean is. And this side of the road is not TDA. But as you drive up towards the coast, the sea goes in. And in some areas, this side of the road is TDA because the coastline has gone in. So therefore, it's not only just on this side, but there's a loads of meters on this side that is TDA. So don't listen when somebody says, well, that side's TDA, this side isn't. It's not true. Also, you might have somebody from the UK or from the US or from Australia or Germany or Europe that are living and they've built a beautiful house there. And you say, well, if they're there and they've built, they're not TDA. So that means the land is okay for me to buy. Sometimes they are TDA, but they won't tell you they're TDA because they don't like to admit they made a mistake so many years ago. And they've had to register with TDA. They've had to build a tourism business and they have to pay the tourism board every year for their TDA lease. Sometimes they're not going to tell you their business. So when you see their house and see that they've built in that area, don't be fooled by thinking it's not TDA because somebody else has built there. Back in the day, in the last regime, there was a lot of people that bought lands in TDAs and they've built. A lot of those people, European and diasporans, are selling off their houses because they know that when the laws are enforced, they will not be able to sell. Their houses will not be worth what they've put into it. So they're quickly selling to you saying, oh, it's not TDA. I'm not Gambian and I own it. So you know what, you buy it. Too many of our clients have bought land and houses like that. So do your own due diligence and figure out, or not even figure out, find out if your land is in the tourism development area. Now, if you have bought TDA land, and a lot of people from England will say, and they've said it to us, oh, I bought the land and this has happened to it. It's on, it's on TDA, um, but I don't want to, I don't want to cause a fuss. I don't want to go to court. I'm just tired now and I don't want to fight it. What can I do? I'm going to do another video on TDA land. If you've bought TDA land, this is... I'm going to walk through the steps in what you need to do. You cannot own it, but you can lease it from TDA. So I'm going to walk through the steps. But as I said before, your first port of call, if you want your money back, go back to the seller and demand your money back because you've been sold something that you didn't know. Buyer beware. But if you want to keep it and you want to run a tourism business, then I'm going to do another video on that. So guys, please remember to like, subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, comment on the video below. And even most importantly, don't feel embarrassed. Share your story so that other people can be forewarned. These guys that are selling these lands are very good at it. And you heard from the message. They're very good at it. And they're very good in bullying you when you actually start asking questions. The more you share your stories and the more we communicate as diasporans, is the more these people will not get away from it. And when you look at these people, a lot of their backgrounds is the same. It's the same people that came together in the first place in the Gambia and started scamming and conning people out of lands. And those same people might have given you a story of this has happened and there's been breakups and there's this and that. This person's not working with this person anymore. Be careful. They may still all be working together. Be careful and do your due diligence.
like, subscribe. Love you guys. Keep sending us emails. If you're going to email us, it's sis number two Africa at gmail.com. Sis to Africa at gmail.com. Comment in the comment area. And ladies, if you want to join our WhatsApp support group or building groups, then email us and we'll add you to them. Thank you.